This week in our Missing Series on News Nation Prime, a mysterious disappearance takes us to the College Michigan State campus in East Lansing. There is a search right now for 18-year-old Brenton Santo. He went to visit friends three months ago on one of the busiest times of the year, but he was never seen again. The big Michigan, Michigan State football game, Halloween weekend, campus was full of people and parties. But when the fans and visitors cleared out, Brendan was gone. Hasn't been heard from. Correspondent Kelly Beeson joining us live from East Lansing tonight with a closer look at Brendan's last known steps and his case. Kelly. Well, Marnie, this is a case police are calling highly unusual. A student seemingly disappears without leaving any evidence behind. And now his parents are getting this story out nationwide, hoping to garner new leads in the case. So he's uh, very independent, funny, lots of friends, you know, a freshman figuring out, you know, what he wanted to be. The challenge for us is every night, going to bed not knowing where your son is. On this now cold and icy campus, a fiery hope keeps loved ones searching for answers. The Santo family has been returning to Michigan State University nearly every day since October of last year. I've walked it. I've tried climbing the wire over there. He's obviously young, much younger than I am. It just doesn't seem natural. It's not an easy thing to get over. Retracing steps and playing out theories in an effort to put missing pieces of a puzzle together. Brad Santo says his wife received a call on October 30th that their son Brendan had been missing from MSU's campus for 16 hours. Yeah, we didn't know what to think. That's just out of character for him, so. Brendan Santo is a freshman at Grand Valley State University, a school about an hour drive to the east. He made the trip to MSU last October to visit friends during Halloween weekend and one of the biggest college football games of the season. MSU versus U of M, it was Halloween weekend, and it was really kind of coming out of COVID a little bit at the time when some of the regulations were being relaxed, so. It was in the midst of a celebratory scene the night of October 29th when Brendan left a gathering of friends at a residence hall around midnight. Data from his phone shows he was planning to meet up with another friend close by. Brendan was in the area just outside of the hall when the data signals stop, as do all sightings of the college freshman. We know he didn't run away. We're pretty confident of that. It's it's one of three things. He's either in the river, someone took him, or something else happened. At this time, our investigation has been reviewed by our local, state, and federal partners, and we still do not have any reason to believe that any foul play is involved. Hundreds of professional investigators and volunteers join the effort to help, scouring land and water for clues. Police and dive teams from more than five counties in the state focus their efforts on a nearby river in the same vicinity where Brendan's cell phone was last detected. Early in the investigation, we utilized multiple canine teams as part of our search effort. And we did have multiple cadaver dogs indicate on the Red Cedar River in the area where Brendan was last seen. Those dogs are not specific to a person, it's just to a body. And I know other people have fallen in the river, so and that scent can hold on forever. There are different reasons that students may go near the river, whether that's to uh, you know relieve themselves, whether they're, they're walking, they go down to the river, and so forth. No one knows. We there's there's no cameras back there. Nobody saw them, so it's it's their best guess, and my best guess is. I don't see it. Part of the river's edge where authorities are searching has a steep drop off from the sidewalk. One theory is that Brendan mistakenly fell down the incline into the water. But after months of searching, not one piece of evidence has been uncovered. There's so much down there that if you fell down this embankment, it would be difficult not to get caught somehow. You would think that, you know, his hat would have blown off. 
if, you know, if he fell down one of the banks, any of those type things that, that we, something, torn clothing, anything. We just have, we haven't found not one thing. You know, it's always important that when we do our jobs, we carry a level of hope and we not make any assumptions and that's what we're doing. And we are committed to, uh, to bringing Brendan home and resolving this case. Brad and his family are asking the nation to be on the lookout and pleading for any additional information from the local community. It's so frustrating that someone hasn't come forward. Police need that tip. They need the information to go on to be able to follow something. Brad describes Brendan as independent and funny, a fan of sports and close with family, adding he will never stop searching for his son. I mean, obviously, the longer it goes on, the, the tougher that it is, but we're trying to hold out hope. You know, that's, that's, that's our choice. And there is now a $30,000 reward for credible information that leads to the return of Brendan home. Barney. It sounds like the cell phone, Kelly, did not pro provide a lot of information. How about surveillance cameras on campus? Is there anything that was able to offer some clues as to where he was headed, caught him uh, on campus at some point that night? You know, Marnie, that is a really interesting question. So what we learn from police during their investigation is that the surveillance cameras in the area Brendan was in were not working the night of October 29th. So what they've been ever able to piece together from friends, from witness statements, from his cell phone data is that he was leaving a residence hall on campus. He was heading toward the area of Michigan Avenue to meet up with another group of friends, which is about 500 feet away from that residence hall. And then the cell phone data goes out in between those two locations. That is why the river has been such a central area for this search, because the river is in between those two areas. Mm. How about his friends, Kelly? Were they able to offer any information that was helpful that night about what he said and what his plans were? Well, what the friends have told investigators, to my knowledge, is that Brendan was, in fact, meeting up with another group of friends, and the cell phone data police have received does corroborate that story. The big question is, where did he go in between those two locations? Nobody has been able to answer that. Well, and I often think, you know, in a situation like this on a college campus, there were a lot of kids there that weekend, but kids are going to school now. They're in class. What are they saying on campus? Are they concerned uh, that there might be somebody out there that's linked to this? Are there signs up? Have they made any changes? There are a lot of signs up. That is thanks in large part to Brendan's father, Brad. He's been putting those signs up himself all around campus to raise awareness about his son's case. And we've come through a lot of local news stories to put this investigation together. And a lot of students have said, it's an eerie feeling to live on a campus where something like this has happened. There are just so few answers in this case, but we are not aware of any major safety overhauls here at MSU. Just a mystery. All right, Kelly, thank you. And if you have any information about the whereabouts of Brendan Santo, you can contact the tip line. We have that number on your screen tonight as our continuing focus on missing people across the country continues. Brendan, just the latest of thousands. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.